A while back, I made a video talking about the history of runway photography, and between Fashion Week and the disappointment that was the Met Gala, I have had the itch to talk about fashion photography once again, and I always knew that I wanted to go back and make a counterpart video. My name is Topanga, and I am a portrait photographer and certified fashion girly. And today we are going to dip into the history of editorial fashion photography. Magazines have been around since the 1500s, but back then they were very article heavy and would have illustrations to accompany them. But we're not gonna talk about those because we're here to talk about the photography. And the first camera, mind you, wasn't invented until 1816, so it took quite a while before any of these magazines had even featured a photo. It wasn't until the late 1800s that we would see publications such as the La Mode Pratique, Harper's Bazaar, and Vogue. Excuse my pronunciation throughout this video. I am very rusty on my French. When cameras were first invented, they were very expensive, and so photography was something that was kind of isolated for wealthy individuals. The earliest collection of fashion photography is considered to be this small book that was published in 1856 by Adolf Brunn. It contained 288 photographs of Tuscan noblewomen at the court of Napoleon III and the Countess of Castiglione, Virginia, in a variety of outfits. In 1909, the journal publisher Condé Nast bought Vogue and had the goal of making it the biggest fashion publication in the world <laughs> and I think he was quite successful in that. Something to note is that in the beginning fashion photography was highly frowned upon within the high art community because it was seen as a betrayal of their morals and ideals in order to seek commercial profit. In 1911, photographer Edward Steichen and Lucien Vogel, publisher of Jardin des Modes and La Gazette du Bouton, decided to use photographs to promote fashion as fine art, trying to sway the opinion. Some believe these photos should be regarded as the first photos of modern fashion photography. French philosopher Ronald Barthes says fashion has three general trends. One, the literal representation as photos in a catalog. Two, romanticized demonstration where fashion refers to a sort of history where life becomes art. And three, fashion to the point of absurdity where the model is shown in an irregular situation or an unrealistic comparison where there is no romance, no reason, and the total absurdity reigns. I just thought this was very interesting and wanted to include it somewhere, and I didn't really have a great spot, so we're just going to throw it right there. Until the late 30s, Paris was the hub of fashion, but because of the effects of World War II, that would eventually shift to New York, the birthplace of the fashion magazine. Some notorious photographers at the time were Edward Steichen, Cecil Beton, and Martin Mukachi. Now, Mukachi was kind of a big deal. He is known as one of the first, if not the first photographers to introduce movement into fashion photography. In the beginning, Fashion photography was very stiff and posed in a way that was very traditional and kind of boring. And he encouraged his models to constantly be moving, which is a technique that is used in modern fashion photography. If you ever watch people working on catalogs or editorial work for fashion brands, then you'll notice that the models are very active. They interact with their clothing a lot. They are constantly moving. So Mukachi is who we can thank for those techniques of today. Mukachi started as a sports and travel photographer, and it would be this background that heavily influenced his fashion work to have that movement aspect to it. His style is known for being dynamic and spontaneous. He preferred to work on location versus having models in the studio, and he would highly encourage his models to constantly be moving during their photo sessions and has even gone on record saying, never pose your subjects, let them move about naturally. Don't let the girl stop to put her hair to rights. 
1932, the cover of Vogue was a colored photograph, and from then on, the publication was exclusively dedicated to photography. Harper's Bazaar would follow suit, and throughout the 20s and 30s, these two publications would really set the standard and reign supreme within the fashion industry. One prominent photographer who worked for Vogue and Harper's Bazaar was Richard Avedon. He started to work as freelance for Harper's Bazaar at 22, and after being denied studio access, he decided to take his models to go shoot on location using locations such as nightclubs, the beach, and the circus even. He would then go to work for Vogue after quitting Harper's Bazaar in 1965 because he received some backlash for working with POC models, and he worked for Vogue until 1992. Avedon's style is described as being surreal and provocative. Known for its harsh black and white contrast, its raw emotion, and a minimalist approach in order to emphasize the model. He even describes his own work as, my photographs don't go below the surface. I have great faith in the surfaces. A good one is full of clues. In the 1970s, there were a lot of social changes and feminism in particular caused a shift in the fashion industry and the way that women were being represented. Women photographers at the time, such as Sarah Moon, Deborah Turville, and Eve Arnold brought fresh perspectives to fashion magazines. And all these women are very talented. I highly recommend going and looking at their work, but while doing research, one that really stood out to me and just spoke to me was Sarah Moon. So I want to go in and tell you about her style. So Sarah Moon was known for her ethereal and painterly work. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's full of jewel tones, romantic features, and magical imagery. She says, for me, photography is pure fiction. I don't believe that I'm making something, an echo of the world maybe. She worked exclusively with Barbara Holenicki of the London clothing brand Bibba and later with French label Cheryl. She also produced works for Vogue, Comme des Garçons, Chanel, and Dior. In 1972, she became the first woman to photograph the Pirelli calendar, which was something that I did not know about until doing this research, so I might do a video about that in the future. But for now, all you need to know is that it's kind of a big deal. It's a calendar that's been around for a long time and features different photographers. Yeah, the recession in the United States during the 70s in combination with the rise of jeans really changed the fashion industry. There was a lot more emphasis on ready to wear fashion styles, and by the 80s, rampant consumerism just made fashion into the worldwide industry that it is today. They were seeing marketing companies, TV commercials, supermodels like Cindy Crawford, Christy Turlington, and Naomi Campbell. Now, today, the boundaries of fashion photography are becoming increasingly blurred between the lines of commercial and artistic. Surrealism is seen in many of the modern photographers, such as Mario Testio, Ellen Van Anrith, and David LaChapelle. I'm very interested to see how the industry continues to grow and change and see where this blurriness ends up with the decline of print that also changes a lot of things and for some it's discouraging but I'm just really interested to see where it ends up but that is all the time that I have for you today if you are interested in learning more about the fashion article side of history within fashion publications I highly recommend Mina Lay's video she goes into so much more research than I could ever. But if you would like to see more, let me know what you would like me to cover down in the comments below. And if you would like to see more of my pretty face, go ahead and subscribe, leave a likey like, all that good YouTube jazz, and I will see you next time. Bye.